Hello pilots, welcome aboard Plasma1945, hopping into an F-16 because there's been a recent update to DCS World and people are asking about a G warm-up. No, a G warm-up is not what it sounds like and it's completely different except unless you're thinking you are warming up your virtual pilot to handle G-forces that are applied to him, her, when they are in combat. So, let's show you what I'm talking about. Now I've got a hostile MiG-29 on my nose, he's 40 miles out, we're going to go for a merge and I'm just, you know, just, just flying, not doing anything too crazy, just uh, warming up my aircraft for a dogfight, but all this work that I'm doing I probably won't need to worry about because, well, in theory, I probably won't survive long enough as I merge up. Full afterburner and uh, very slick looking F-16 that I've got here. As you can see, there's not too much on my aircraft. The G-Force that you're experiencing is listed in the top left-hand corner of your HUD. As you can see, it's 1.0.9, and we're going to go for a merge. The max G you're going to experience is listed continuously at the bottom left-hand corner, right below the arm button. And here he comes. So we're going to start pulling, and we're going to try to go for maximum G and see how long we can hold maximum G here. 9.2, 9.3, and we've blacked out. That was pretty quick, and in theory, I'm in a lot of trouble here. My plane's heading for the ground. Hopefully, I can come out of the G effect. There it is, I'm out of the G effect. And uh, now I have to find this MiG-29 and try to kill it. But as you can see, that was most inconvenient as I was trying to, you know, Get onto the guys six o'clock. See if I can find him real quick and uh, take him out with a shot. The reason I'm going for a wide angle effect here is not because I'm trying to be confusing or hide my HUD. It's because, well, I don't have my track IR or helmet on, so I'm just kind of doing this from the comfort of my aircraft. But as you can see, I start kind of graying out here as I get into that 7-8G uh, position. And that MiG-29 is probably somewhere on my 6 by now. Or at least it should be. Let's take a look here. Where is he? Ah, he's slotting in nicely on my 6 o'clock. He's somewhere back there. I'm going to cut my throttle, pull back hard on the stick. See if he can collapse the circle. Maybe he won't follow me through. Now let's go for reverse. See if I can find this guy. There he is. Oh, he's right under me. But boy, oh boy, these G effects are starting to get to me, hey? I can barely fly most unpleasant and that's happening because there's a lot of g-force being exerted onto my pilot my virtual pilot and that is modeled in dcs for all aircraft and now i got real slow which probably means that that make 29 should be using the software opportunity to get onto my six o'clock i locked something where is he Come on, missile, don't go for the sun. Give me a splash. And of course it goes for the sun. Let's finish this guy off real quick here. Box two. That should be a good hit. And there's a splash of MiG-29A. So let's do that same thing, but this time we'll actually do a G-Force warm-up. All right, so in a G warm-up, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to warm up my virtual pilot's body. This is something that is modeled in DCS World. And that is done just like a real pilot would warm up in a case of training, maneuvers, exercises, pretty much in the real world. Now, what happens in a G warm-up? Well, basically, 
you need to offset left or right from your course and apply g-force to your pilot. So let's do that right now. I've got the hostile on my nose. I'm going to pull hard to one side. Get almost to 9 G's. I'm going to reverse. Let's go the other way. There you go. We've got 9 G's on each side. And let's go back at this MiG-29 here. Let's find him and... Let's go for that merge. So I've applied a bit of G-force to my body, kind of warming myself up for a IG maneuver that I'm going to attempt here. Hostiles within four miles. It's probably going to try to pass me on the right side again. So here it comes. I'm going to follow him through. Pulling really hard on the stick as hard as I can. 9.2, 9.2, 9.2. I haven't blacked out yet. I haven't blacked out yet. As you can see, guys, I'm going much longer and much further without blacking out. I can, oh, and there's the blackout. Hopefully I don't hit the water. Please don't hit the water. All right. safely out of the G effect, but I could hold that turn for much longer, as you can see there. All right, so let's compare the two maneuvers here real quick. So first maneuver, coming in for the merge, start pulling hard on the stick. And right here, we hit nine Gs at approximately timestamp of 46 and 15 seconds. We hit 9.2, 9.2, 9.2, and five seconds later, I've entered G lock, which means I've basically blacked out. So let's take a look at the G warm up maneuver. All right, so here's our G warm up maneuver. And we're going to bring up the same information. So from the top down, if we look at the aircraft, I do a right turn, a left turn and then come back on course with the enemy aircraft. And we're going to look for that merge and see at what point do I hit 9 Gs. We're looking for this number right here to hit 9. So as you saw before, we had about 5 seconds before I went into G lock at around 9.2. All right, so there we go. We've hit 9 Gs at 46 and 25 seconds. So let's see how long and how high this G will go on this turn after a G warm up. I'm even hitting 9.3 Gs. 9.3, 9.3, and pause. So right here I've hit G lock. And as you can see, we've gone for much longer without over Ging our pilot. So I was able to complete almost, I would probably say, 180 degrees of a turn and if of course if we put these side by side we'll see quite a bit of difference so here's one here's two and there's the result so let's bring it back to just when i start pulling g into the turn and play them side by side so three two one play and play here's the onset of g and there we go, we've hit nine on both sides. And as you can see on the right side, I've already passed out and lost control. Whereas on the other side, I'm still maintaining the turn and I'm even hitting a higher G-force. Whereas here I've pretty much lost control. So here I've got into G-lock and here I've gone into G-lock and recovery. And recovery. Now, the other thing we can look at is the time between G lock and recovery. So let's take a quick look at that. It's all computers and it's all science. So we go into G lock right around here. Let's make an assumption that's at 4620. And G lock lasts for a solid, I would probably say 1234. So 
14 seconds. And let's take a look at G-Lock here. So we enter G-Lock at, let's say, 38. And there's about the same 12 seconds before I recover. So the time to G-Lock doesn't really matter, but as you can see in a maneuver, you're able to stay at high G for much longer. Let's go back down into that top view and look at that again. So all I got was half a turn here, or not even half a turn. And here I almost got to about probably 280 degrees of a turn, maybe 220 degrees of a turn. But as you can see, much more at a much higher G after a G warm up that I executed, which I executed a little bit earlier. And as you can see, it wasn't too much of a, uh, wasn't too hard of a maneuver. Didn't take too long. Let me just go to the right, go to the left, and then come back out. But there is your difference in the performance of the aircraft and of your pilot after doing a G warm up. Hopefully, you've enjoyed this video. As always, Plasma1945 with you. Fly safe and leave comments.